Welcome to Land the House. I'm Seth. This is the Energizer brand 2100 watt and 2150 watt hour power station. Let's go ahead and take a look at this thing and put it to the test. Let's go ahead and open this box here and see what all comes in this package. So warranty card and an instruction booklet. We've got the power brick. This is the AC to DC power adapter. Of course, we'll look at all these things individually here in just a moment. Um, we've got that one. And then over here, we have a bag of uh, cables and cords. So we'll get to that as well. Remove this nice big foam packaging. Now this unit is quite heavy. I'll give you the specs on that here in just a bit. So uh, let me go ahead and see if I can get this up and out of the box. Before we dive into all the features of this unit, let's take a tour of the outside and also look at some of the uh, cables that came with the unit. So first of all, let's start with the top. It has two 15 watt wireless charging spots. So you can set devices right there and it will charge. It has these two rubberized handles. Now the battery inside of here is lithium iron phosphate and it's uh, rather heavy. So it's nice to have those handles for the, uh, I believe, 66 pounds that this thing weighs. So uh, nice to have those handles on top. So let's uh, first of all move over here to this side. So it's got uh, two different input ports. This is an aviation plug and it's 145 volt DC, 15 amp. And you can put various uh, attachments on here. Um, so let's say you're gonna be charging through solar or a car uh, then you can attach the cables there, which those are included. I'll show you in a moment. And then over here is your um, input from your AC adapter. So you'll plug this right here up to house power. And then it has just a barrel plug here that goes into that. But we'll show that here closer in just a moment. Let's spin this over here. On this side, you've got a single cooling fan which uh, will pull air into the unit to uh, let it cool off if it gets overheated. And then let me spin this around to the back. It's just got a little bit of information there about the unit, model number and such. And then if I tilt this down, you can see the unit has these four rubberized feet that help it to uh, stay on a surface and not slide around. All right, let's look at the front here and see all of the different ports. The first thing I noticed is there's only one button and this is the power button. The display here is touchscreen and has all the other options built into it. So this one button is all you need. Okay, so let's start off with all the outputs here on the front. The DC 12 volt 30 amp, this is the aviation plug. Um, so that's uh, interesting to have. It has six AC output. Now right here it says 100 to 110 volt AC is 2000 watts. The 110 to 120 volt AC is 2100 watts. So basically between all six of these, you can have 2100 watts of uh, consumption right there. So very nice to have this many plugs. Up here on the DC output, you got your typical cigarette or car style plug there, which is 12 volt, 10 amp. And then if you move down here, you've got two barrel plugs and those are also 12 volt, 10 amp. Down here, you have a 100 watt USB type C, just a single one of those. And then you've got two of the USB A 18 watts. And then up here is your old standard USB type A 5 volt 3 amp. And that is all the outputs on this unit. Now, the other things that come with this power station are the instruction booklet and the AC to DC adapter and then the other cables. So let's go over this stuff real quick. So right here, you've got the uh, wall plug and that is just going to hook up over here. So I kind of like the units that have this giant box built into the device. That way, all you have to have is this cord right here and not have to carry around all of this. But this unit's got this and uh, because this battery is so big, you can probably charge it at home and take it on the job site or uh, camping with you and have plenty of power in here. So that's nice to have to uh, do AC charging. 
So this is the aviation plug, XT60, and then they have another one with the aviation plug, which is an XT90. And then you've got the uh, XT90 uh, female side to a couple of MC4, so that can go directly to solar panels. You've got a single USB type C cable, so you can charge uh, devices that use that. Then over here, we've got the XT60 to the Anderson. And then lastly, there's the uh, car adapter that goes to the XC90. So, And then lastly, it has a little instruction booklet, which is a fold out. And it's actually, uh, there's not a lot of material as far as a booklet goes, but there's a tremendous amount of information on this thing. So it has basic uh, quick start and how to attach solar panels, and then on the turn on the back, it's got these nice charts showing all kinds of great information. Let's go over some of the features here on the touch screen. So I'm gonna push the power button right here. It has a green light that pops up. The Energizer logo comes on here, and now the unit is ready to use. Here is the display. So it's a little bit hard for you to see, but up here in the top corner, it's got 2022, August 25th and that's when I am filming this video. 52% uh, left on the battery here in the middle. It's got, uh, the grid has no watts coming in. The AC load has no watts. We've got AC off, DC off currently. And we've got DC load, and then we've got either car or uh, your uh, PV, which is solar power up there in the top corner. So those are the main things on here for the top screen. If we go into settings, We've got it set to English, 110 volt. So if we want to change that, we could do uh, 120. It's on 60 hertz, and it's got uh, DC input source others right now. So if we can do uh, back out of that. I'm seeing a next right here. Let's see what's next. We've got buzzers is currently on. Echo mode is off. Uh, we've got uh, touch sound is on and the brightness is all the way up. Here's where you can set your time. And then uh, let's see, we can go back out of all these to the main menu. Here's some data. So you can get uh, the product info, the inverter and uh, charger info, alarm settings and battery information. And then here is your alarm log here. None of them have been triggered. So we're back to the main homepage. So let's turn on the AC, tap this once, say okay on. You can see the light becomes uh, prominent here. And over here, it's showing uh, blinking, waiting for some output on the AC. You can also turn on the DC side. And then once again, that is blinking to show that it's looking for uh, a watt value going out. And to turn them off, you just touch again and say off. Touch again, say off, and it will stop that. And then to turn the unit off, you just hold down your power button, wait a second, and then it will shut the unit off. Let's go ahead and begin testing out this unit. The first thing I want to do is try all of the charging methods. So first of all, I'm gonna use hopefully the uh, Anderson plug and also the MC4. And to use these two, I have to use both of the aviation plugs. And so we can uh, try to charge this through solar panel in the sun. And then we'll step over to the car and use the car charger. And then lastly, we will uh, hook up the power brick and charge this up to 100% before we start doing some discharge tests with this unit. I have two solar panels set up here in the sun and they have uh, these barrel plugs on them. So the first thing I would like to try is to connect a single panel through the MC4 connectors, and then I'll try hooking up two connectors and go to the Anderson plug here. So let's go ahead and give this a try. You open up the bag of cables, and get those dumped out here. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, try the MC4 connector, and that's got the larger XT90 on it. So let's find the aviation to XT90. And I may just keep that with that uh, twist tie on there. So first thing we need to do is move over here. 
unscrew this cap for the input. And I don't know if there's, yeah, there is a correct direction for that to screw in. There we go. And so now we use the cable here to plug up the MC4. And now on one of my solar panels, I can hook up the NC, MC4 there and then hopefully get this to work here. Let me move this over here so we can see if the display will come on automatically when power is detected. All right, plugging this up. There we go. Okay, nice, the display has come on. Let me zoom in so we can see what's going on there. All right, looks like I've got 29, 28 watts coming in. This is a 100 watt panel, so let's give it a moment and see if that value increases. It is a bit foggy out today, so it may not have close to the 100 watts. Well, I just misspoke earlier. One of these aviation plugs is female and one is male. And uh, the one that has the Anderson, the uh, uh, XT60, is only for an output. So I'm unable to use my two panels in com uh, combined because I don't have the uh, splitter that would go to the MC4. So we'll just have to stick with this single input here. I unplugged the MC4 and the solar panel again because I wanted to go into the settings and change this. I had it on uh, other and put the input to the uh, solar and see if that actually increases the uh, input from the solar. So let's see what happens here. I've plugged that back up. The solar has popped on there. Yes, okay, now we're getting the results I was hoping to see. 74, 76, 77. So it does matter, there's 80 watts, 81. It does matter to have the settings on the PV and not on other. So keep that in mind if you're charging with the solar. I'm out here in the car now. I'm gonna connect the XT90. So it's now connected to this car charging plug. And I want to turn the power back on here on the unit because now that I have set this thing to charge from solar, I wanna go back in here and set it to charge from the car. So let's zoom in a bit. Go to settings. And then from, instead of PV over here on the side, I'm gonna click the others options right there and then go back. So now, whenever I plug this up to my car, we should start seeing an input on this top car section. There we go, 102 watts, very nice, 103. So that will charge up this unit quicker than that one panel would. Now the solar can handle up to 900 watts. So the car looks like it's gonna do a little bit over 100 watts. For the last charging method, I'm gonna use the AC to DC power brick. So plug this up to the wall and then plug this up to that uh, barrel plug right over here. So let's do that. The fan on this started up immediately, which means even if it's plugged in not being used, it is gonna consume some power. So that's something to consider. Plug this up. Let's check out our display here. The display did not turn on by itself. Let's see if it is charging. Push the power button over here. I kind of anticipated that this would turn on by itself, but it did not. So you do have to have the power button pushed on before it's going to start pulling power. So I've got 467 or eight watts right now. So it's gonna take some time to charge this large battery, but for now it does seem to be working. Let's see if it's possible to use this unit while it is also charging up from the AC power. So I have got a cell phone here that we can charge up wirelessly. So let me go ahead and uh, turn on the DC by pushing the DC on and let's see. All right, it shows that it's on. Let me place this here. Yep, 
the phone has uh, picked up that there's wireless charging and it seems to be doing its thing. Taking a look at the display, it's got 13 watts going into that phone right now. I also want to use the included USB Type-C cable to charge up a kid's tablet. So let's unwind this, go down here to the USB Type-C, plug that up, and then I've got this little tablet here that I can plug this up to. See what we get? Nothing so far. All right, I'll come back to that and see if it'll work. Let me go up here to a, uh, a USB 18 watt and plug up another uh, USB mini right here. See if this will come on. Yep, that one did work, so this is charging. Very good. Okay. Uh, this connection is really good and I just did not push it in far enough and so now this one is charging as well. So it's nice to see when the USB um, has to be pushed in there pretty solid to get it to work. All right, so yes, you can use the DC while the unit is charging. Now I've got a fan. Let's see if this will turn on with the AC while it's charging here as well. So I'm gonna go over here and push the AC on, turn it on. Okay, it's indicated that it has turned on. Let's plug this up over here. And then turn my fan on. Yep, there we go. We got 40 watts for the AC, 24 watts for the DC, charging the unit at uh, uh, 464 watts. Charging the phone, charging two tablets through USB, and then running a fan over here is all working together. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop all of this so it will charge up faster. Got our AC done. Let's go ahead and turn that back to off here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the DC as well so it will charge up as fast as possible. The power station has been completely charged now for about an hour. And just as I expected, the power brick is still running the fan. So even if you unplug that, it's gonna to continue to run. And so we're gonna to have to uh, make sure we unplug that when it's not needed. All right, now that the unit is 100% charged, we can begin a discharge test. For this discharge test, I have a kilowatt meter. This will keep track of the time and also show the watts or kilowatts used. And then I also have this little heater, which is rated at 1,500 watts. So that should be able to let us discharge the battery here pretty quickly so we can see how well it performs. First of all, I'm gonna turn on the power button here. Wait for the display to show up. It's uh, initializing. All right, we're at 100%. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the AC. Okay, that's looking for input. Now the little flaps right here might hinder my kilowatt meter from going in. Let's see if I can push it pretty good. All right, yes, it has come on. Let me go ahead and do a full reset. All right, so if I go to the menus, it has zero kilowatt hours, time zero, zero, zero. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this up now. And if I turn the unit on to uh, max, and let's do fan on to max. There we go, it's already started to heat up. The heater is running and heating up quite well. And if I can zoom in here, hopefully you'll be able to see the display. We've got 1,412 roughly watts on this. 98% and it's been one minute here on the display. Now if I click through here to the uh, kilowatt 0.01 right there. So, all right, let's do a test on this to see how well the unit performs over the next hour or so. I stepped away for a while and the unit has stopped. So it says 0% on the battery. I'm not sure how well it's gonna translate for you, but uh, and also 
no more display here on the kilowatt meter. So I can plug that back up and see what it uh, shows inside real quick. But uh, yes, so 0% here now showing on the display. Go ahead and turn that off. I have a power cord that should bring power back to the kilowatt meter and it does. So let's go ahead and see what this display shows here. Let's go through. We used 1.72 kilowatt hours. Elapsed time is an hour and 14 minutes. The Energizer power station ran for an hour and 15 minutes with 1,400 watts being pulled on this heater. And it uh, allowed this unit to have uh, 1.7 kilowatt hours used. So definitely underperforming from the 2100 watt hours that is advertised for this unit. I'm not exactly sure what caused such a large uh, difference between the rated watt hours and the actual watt hours, but it does not seem to be um, displaying the, uh, the rated values. All right, so my personal list of pros and cons. Let's start with the pros. First of all, I really like the push button uh, start for the touch screen. Uh, it's kind of nice to be able to get into all those different settings so quick and easy. So that was very nice. I like all the covers that fall down to protect all of those from getting dust and debris in there. And uh, I really like the wireless charging up top. I use that on my cell phone exclusively. The rubberized handle is nice. I did carry this around with one handle and it held up well. The unit is heavy and so I do recommend that you use two handles for that. And now for my personal list of cons. Number one, this thing did not live up to its watt hour rating. So uh, it was down by, what, 300 watt hours? So definitely uh, low on that. Um, so I like to have a flashlight on a power station and this one does not have one. So um, the display puts out a little bit of light, but not enough that you'd want to uh, do some work by or read by. So that's definitely a negative. The unit's heavy, but it's a lithium iron phosphate battery. So uh, no problems there. Now over here, the uh, input seemed to work well. Um, but the cables, I think, were a little bit cumbersome here on this right here, this input. And uh, I'd like to have seen an Anderson plug for the input uh, here on this as well. So that was a bit of an annoyance. All right, other than that, the unit seems to be a nice unit. I just like to be able to see that watt hour value uh, as advertised on a brand new unit. And so uh, not sure what went on there. I'm gonna do a follow-up video to this one on my Tools, Tech, and Gear channel to see if I can get this unit to display the advertised watt hours. In the meantime, I'm Seth with Land of House. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll have a link in the description down below so you can check out this unit. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.